What's good guys, it's your boy isn't and I'm back once again with another video. There is a shocking video right now I'm about to put out there for everybody to see. If you haven't wake up, you have to wake up right now. Especially people in that zoo, zoological republic. That is people in that Nigeria, you can call it Niger area, you can call it Nigeria, you can call it Negro area. You know what I'm saying? You can call it black area. All these things are heavy cause means one thing so the video right now I'm about to spill out is revealing the plans of the foreigners what will be coming in 2022 and their plans right now i'm not gonna like spill too much tea out there so let's get into the video bro and the truth and let me make some revelations because some of us also have our own intelligence networks okay okay we have met with some of the bandits. We have met with some of their high commanders. One or two who have repented. They have sat down with us, not once, not twice. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same thing. They have a sophisticated network. During this lockdown, there are planes were moving up and down as though there was no lockdown. Moving ammunition, moving logistics, moving money, and distributing them in different parts of the country. They are already in the south, in the rainforest of the south. They are everywhere. They told us that when they finish these rural killings, they will move to phase two. The phase two is they will go into the urban cities, going from house to house, killing prominent people. I can tell you, this is the game plan. By 2022, they want to start a civil war in Nigeria. Don't joke with what I'm saying. I have a PhD from Oxford University. I'm a central banker. We don't talk nonsense. So don't joke with what I'm telling you. I have this from the highest possible authority, higher possible, higher authorities of some of the commanders of the killers and Boko Haram. You, you said you said northern governors, past or present, Dr. Badaya. No, current, current, current. No, they said one of them is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. One of them. It's a horrible situation at this point and the Nigerians don't want to wake up and they don't want to see what is after them, what is coming to them and what is holding them actually. That the government is not for them. Buhari is not there, no president, no vice president, nothing. Listen to the terrorist Nigerian government build complaining and there is Clegi right there. He's all the invitations, he's been there. <laughs> Mm. 
this is another invitation they invited the same terrorists and the same cleric as you can see the man right there is the same guy and they are the same people my young government created the same bandit they call it bandit but they are all terrorists that are trying to take the north and they are the same people they gave 100 billion they continue to give them money it's not the first time second third these guys are a different terrorist group because in nigeria they created more than 11 terrorist group there keep listening <laughs> In the name of Allah, the most the merciful, the beneficent. It is a great pleasure for me to stand in front of you, the men of press, to give you a hint on what we have experienced in our sojourn in South Africa states. The purpose of our visit here is to go and see with our own eyes what is happening. To investigate and see with our own eyes, not to remain, not, not to depend on hearsay or what the uh, armchair critics say about what is happening. So we are able to go and meet some of the militants and listen to their grievances. And we understand that they have a lot of grievances which could be addressed and they are ready to lay down their arms. This is the easiest, the safest way to tackle the insecurity that is the permeated the region now. Contrary to those who think that there should not be any negotiation with bandits, I don't know who said that. I don't know who said there is no negotiation. There is no negotiation and there has been no negotiation. And nobody can tell any Nigerian about this because we have seen in the previous regime where they have negotiation with Niger militants, Niger Delta militants. In which now they have a ministry, they have a commission to look at their development. So many of them were taking on scholarship to study and they are still in peace after that negotiation. So the same thing. If you apply the same formula, the same psychology and the same physical ideology, the same thing. We 
we will have peace. We will have hope. We will have peace in the tournament areas in the United States. Actually, in my opinion, you know what I'm saying, this is a clear message they are sending to Biafrans because of what Mazna and they can told them that if they attack Biafrans, the terrorists will take over North. So, as he is now speaking it in English, is a message. So, Biafrans take note. They want to stop the terrorists from the North so that all of them can emerge and attack Biafrans. But it is impossible to achieve. Keep listening. So... We don't want anti activities to be uh, criticizing what we have done. What we have done, we have done it with our own conviction. We are not uh, pressed by any political, religious, or any other uh, affiliation. We are seeking peace and the pleasure of our Creator, which is Allah. And that's why we came in here and undertaken this. I thank all the people who were in my entourage. I thank uh, the people of, uh, of, of what do you call it? Uh, what? No, the people of the farm for the hospitality we have seen and the government, especially the government itself. I am in full support of what the government is doing in negotiating with these uh, citizens that are misled. I call them misled citizens. I have spoken with them face to face and they are ready to lay down their arms if their conditions are fulfilled. And I find all the conditions they gave as justifiable because they don't want to be niche when they come into our market. They don't want to be profiled just because he's buying a, uh, a, a, a new bicycle, uh, a, a, what do you call it? Uh, the, the police school, motorcycle, the police school, ask them. This is their complaints, so basic. They want amenities, they want schools, they want uh, hospitals. So I see that peace with Allah's wish is very, very close. And that I hope that Nigerians will all cooperate together, we should come together so that we have everlasting peace in this region. Thank you very much. Okay, we are able to visit two bandit camps, but as of how many of them, I didn't conduct any census there, but there are many, 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 and Let's we see. hope, we hope, uh, I've tried to contact with some as I'm coming back from Guni, they are ready to also surrender their weapons, and we also hear the the governor is talking about by Tuesday we have another contingent of militants that are ready to submit their weapons. This, this is a laudable effort. We have to thank it. And this is the only way we also call on other governors to emulate what is happening in the other state. For the question of stigmatization of the repentance, no, the, we have to understand Nigeria has faced civil war in which the vanquish was not stigmatized and the awareness was strong to them. So we should consider them as those who were vanquished in the war and we should not stigmatize them and we should give them all their rights and privileges as a nation. Yes, those who are victims of this uh, mayhem should also be compensated by the government. And you'll be surprised. The militants too have offers as a result of collateral damage from the military. They too should be compensated by the government. So all the victims of this crisis should be compensated by the government. And I suppose lastly, sir, my name is Abubakar Abed. I am with the News Agency of Nigeria. Okay. Uh, you made calls for uh, at different points. Yes. What about Fulanis that are being attacked, particularly in the southern parts of the country, especially the one that happened lately, day before yesterday in Ebonyi State? What calls are you going to make? And is it likely that after these visits, you are going to go to uh, areas where Boko Haram are attacking uh, citizens in the country? Yes. Uh, first, uh, about the southern states, is, is our intention to go there and gather as many of them as possible to educate them on how, on how to be good citizens in the state they live. And also to show them they have an equal right as Nigerians 
like other Nigerians to be in any forest. They want to bear their cattle. Just like non-Indian of any state has rights to come into their markets, everybody who is some profession, they have rights to come and acquire land and farm, they do have uh, that right because we want to keep Nigeria one. But then we have to admonish them about crimes, that they should never be engaged and found to be involved in any form of crime, and they should also try to suppress crime between among themselves. This is what we intend to do. As Boko Haram too, Boko Haram, uh, people are just afraid. Boko Haram are also, the, what we are seeing now is the same phenomenon, the same process of producing Boko Haram. Honestly speaking, I was very happy. When I joined them, I realized they were not radicalized in a religious form. Because they respect scholars, they say people not because of scholars who are coming here. Boko Haram are already radicalized in a political form. But then still, uh, we cannot lose hope. If there is dialogue, if there is dialogue, I think there is hope. Because they are women, they understand, and they are suffering the consequence of war, which they think is not, is not good. So I don't rule out even in the near future. We can discuss with them if they can lay down their peoples. So many have laid down their peoples. They are weapons in the past. We thank you very much. Thank, thank you. It's another opportunity for dialogue on the security situation in the country. This time between leaders of the Miyeti Ala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, the Imostek Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, the leadership of the Oanese Ndibu, Hausa Muslim community in Imo State, traditional rulers and top government executives. Aside the Imo State Governor Op Uzodima, who convened this all important meeting, the Governor of Kebi State, Abubaka Bagudu, and his counterpart in Jigawa, Governor Mohamed Abubaka, are also present. The National Secretary of the Miyeti Ala Cattle Breeders Association opens the discussion. We have never condoned criminality, and we have never supported criminality. What this country is witnessing today about the pastoralists is due to so many reasons. But what they face in the north is more than what is taking place in the southern part of the country. Today, from the typical victims that we are, most parts of the country are seen as, as the culprits. Today, Your Excellency, we lost over 5 million cows as a result of cattle wrestling in the north. The two northern governors make it clear that no amount of false accusations and unsubstantiated claims by those who are hellbent on causing this harmony in the country will make northerners rise against their Igbo brothers in the north. There is a criminal, maybe in every human society, in every tribe, but that criminal should not define the tribe. Why society should mobilize the majority and confront those criminals and fight them with all that it takes. No leader in evil land is supporting or encouraging those fake news, those videos that were being separated and, 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 and distributed all across the country to create tension in the land. And that is why the leaders in the north said, no, this is not what we get from the leaders of the evil land. And this is not true. For Governor Uzo Dimma, peaceful coexistence, unity and love amongst Nigerians, irrespective of their political, ethnic or religious affiliation, is critical to the nation's existence. We want a united Nigeria, a Nigeria that will be strongly coherent, a Nigeria that will, will be colored with love and tolerance, a Nigeria that if I decide, 
tomorrow that I want to move from Imo State to go and settle in Abia State. I can settle in Abia State. If I want to leave Abia State to go and settle in River State, I can settle in River State. Do my businesses, bring up my children, go about everything I want to do in life without fear of any molestation. His views are corroborated by the leadership of the Adnese Ndigo. We have something in common. Which means if there is trouble anywhere, we should find the source and form it together. This is the second time in the last six months that Governor Uzodima is calling a meeting of this nature to ensure that there is peaceful coexistence between indigents and people of other tribes living in the states. Channels Television News.